quiz. One of these people spent World War II sewing uniforms, the other flying Spitfires. So, which was which? The answer will surprise you. The seamstress, this man who got into sewing rather than fighting because he was severely mollycoddled by his mother and, sadly, the poor chap ended up as a softie. The Spitfire pilot, a woman, Eleanor Hartley, who defied convention to help transport military aircraft to wherever it was needed. Because it's an irrefutable fact that without the role played by women in almost every sphere in both civil and military life, the Second World War would have been slightly harder to win. Today, Eleanor is 94 and has very kindly agreed to join us here at Goodwood Aerodrome to return to the wonderful machines that she once flew. Eleanor, thank you so much for joining us. It's lovely to be here. A wonderful, wonderful woman to whom we all owe an enormous debt of gratitude. In the end, though, her interview was largely unusable. Heavy frost this morning. Mm -hmm. To learn more, I spoke to a man much better versed in Spitfire history. Good morning. My name's Alan. Roger. And your name? Roger. Oh, sorry, I thought you were agreeing with me. No, just telling you my name. Oh, I see. Right. Well, I'm Alan Partridge. Roger that. Right. And uh, your full name? That. Is your name... Don't say anything. Is your name Roger that? It turns out the airman, a bit of a character with a love of wordplay, is actually called Paul Wheeler. But he pretends to be called Roger that to bamboozle new trainees. So he has also just, appeared uh, on Countdown. I really didn't do jokes like that because I'm a journalist. Now, Eleanor here, one of the few people left alive who understands what it was like to fly the Spitfire and, and carry that huge responsibility. What was it like, do you think, for people like Eleanor to carry such huge responsibility? Well, I don't, I don't think anyone was in any doubt as to how integral Spitfire was to the war effort. I suppose the only way to truly understand the sacrifice made by Eleanor and people like her is for me to put myself in their shoes. So if the plane gets into trouble, there's no ejector seat, so you'll have to bail out. Why would the plane get into trouble? Oh, we just have to give you the bailout procedure. OK. So if the pilot says, jump, 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 you lower the seat, you unlatch the canopy, you unplug the radio, open the door, jump away from the plane and deploy your parachute by pulling the D-ring. D-ream? No, D-ring. Yes, of course. Now, if you land in water... Oh, hang, hang on, hang on. Say it again? Yes, again. Lower the seat, unlatch seat. the canopy, canopy, unplug the radio... Why not do door. that bit? Well, you need to do that bit, otherwise you'll be tethered to the plane and pulled down to earth with it. OK, I'll definitely do that then. I'll just uh, asterisk the important ones. Well, they were all important. Yeah, I'll asterisk all of them then. And after a handful of toilet trips, which I'm told is perfectly normal, it was time to spread my wings like the arms of a bird and take off. Does this say latch or cat? Can't look right now, sorry. Can you radio and ask someone? Not right now. OK, but soon. I was quickly lost in admiration for this plucky little aeroplane, and it was a privilege to climb heavenwards until I was touching the face of God with the very tip of my nose. Up here, you can be proud to be British, and uh, no left wing people can tut at you. No one to admonish you by having a certain point of view. No one accusing you of culturally appropriating a Moroccan to be wearing a fez, even though you've only gone as Tommy Cooper. Sometimes wonder why we bothered winning the war.